quite 100 percent it just jumped up so we're going to let this sit for a while and uh see if the truck starts after it's at full capacity again all right so we're just going to add power to the truck this is in the in the on position i've not tried to start it yet now let's go for a start click nothing So, yeah, I got plenty of juice. I want to check that solenoid or whatever. I get one click, and uh, maybe we've got a loose connection down there. Maybe the solenoid's gone bad. I know there were there was a batch of them, from what I read in the forums, where they were having some, you know, a certain number of solenoids were having some issues. So, uh, had something to do with excessive uh, grease or something on the inside of it, and. I don't know. Anyhow, we'll continue to let this charge and get down there and start wiggling some stuff around just to see what's going on. Plus, I'll put a voltmeter on there and do a voltage drop test. All right. So we pulled the wheel off, removed about a thousand screws to get this, uh, this silencer out from under here. And uh, here's what we're looking at. So, <clears throat> Just looking at the ground locations, here's one ground, uh, you know, where it's obviously exposed to a lot of uh, moisture, car washes, you know, things like that. Um, so we're gonna get this off and get this cleaned. The other ground location is right here behind the block. And looking at the, uh, the positive cable coming down, um, you can see there's a little bit of corrosion right there. The heat shield obviously doing what it's supposed to do because it's been cooked a little bit. That that does peel back and then there's a plug here for the solenoid. And then check out this rub mark. Now I'm not saying that that's, that's not all the way through or anything. I mean it's protected but still uh, there's a potential right there for wear and tear. So we're going to inspect that as well while we're at it. <clears throat> Alright so uh, yeah the cabling travels right here. It goes right on up and here's all the other uh, leads that come down from the battery area Okay, so this wire removed um, you can see That feels like a rubberized material right there um, Not much of a grounding location This side is still protected and decent looking But how is it making a good connection unless they have some kind of grease on there this side wasn't too bad here's the uh, the screw so I'm just going to wire wheel this off a little bit, get a little bit more metal exposure, get this thing reattached, and uh, just sort of tighten that area up a little bit. Might even put a little dielectric grease on it. Okay, uh, area cleaned up and uh, ground cable reinstalled. Well, I had to go get a voltmeter. I can't find mine, and uh, I got to do a voltage drop test on this vehicle track down where the problems are poor Chevy all right so I'm gonna to attempt to show you something interesting here so I've got a good known ground all right <clears throat> and when I touch the power supply going to the starter I'm getting 12.68 volts all right when I touch the stud I'm hardly getting anything. Let me go energize the circuit and test it. So here I've uh, pulled the starter out. It's amazing how small this thing is uh, to crank over such a big engine. But anyhow, look at the corrosion on the terminals. Now I'm not saying that this is the problem. I'm going to take this down and have them hook it up with all their connections and uh, run a test on it. I could bench test it, but I'll just... I'll let them do it. Before I go down there though, I'm gonna do a, uh, uh, a uh, an amp test. All right, so we're gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna see how many amps are being drawn in the system. 
Um, you can see that I've got the negative cable disconnected. I've got the positive lead to the multimeter attached to that. And uh, I'm just going to put this probe on that terminal right down there, the, the uh, negative battery post, and see what I'm reading. I should have 50, uh, you know, milliamps or less uh, being drawn from the truck. Now, when I attach the lead, you're going to see a little bit of a spike because I'm basically completing the circuit and the computer is energized and probably going through its own little paces. Um, but then it will level out. So let's turn it on. And you can see I've got it set here at uh, 200 milliamps. All right. Now let me go ahead and put this probe on the uh, terminal. And we'll hold it there for a little bit. So I'm suspecting that the uh, the computer's like, hello, I'm awake. Let's do a quick scan of all our sensors. Let's check things out. Let's do some calculations. Let's start to relax a little bit. And then we're holding steady. in this range so all right that, that's well within limits so we're at my favorite advanced auto <laughs> and i'm going to introduce you to somebody who helps me out all the time can i introduce you you okay with that yeah who are you jt jt down advance auto that's right so jt uh, kind of watches us a little bit on our on our stuff and we've got the starter on the machine so let me turn the camera around do me First of all, just bench testing it. Everything hooked up, ground, everything. We're just gonna okay. let it roll. Yes, it did spin. See the results. All right, so amp draw result is 78.1, but everything passes. Dude, what the hell's wrong with my truck? Buy a new one. Well, the starter tests out just fine. Um, I cleaned off the terminals and stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it into the vehicle. Uh, we'll reconnect the ground cable and uh, see if we can get it to start again. I don't know. All right, starter's back in. Ground is reconnected. Let's see if anything happens. Yeah, here's the interior fuse panel. I'm telling you, this is getting old. Now look at that. The truck just started. Started twice in a row. All right, gauge is showing a little over 14. Let's go out and put the meter on it. I don't know, folks, maybe the act of uh, taking that starter out and cleaning off the contacts and putting things back together had some impact. Um, I did remove some corrosion. I've got a good solid charge on the battery, and uh, that's that. So we'll hope for the best and see what happens. If anything changes, I obviously will come back online and let you know. So. Yeah, I got a good test. I got a good charge going. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to shut this truck off and come back in a couple of hours and see if she starts. So, 
I'm not telling you I fixed the problem. It just could be stupid, dumb luck. But I just wanted to show you what I went through today. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're back a little bit later. I'm gonna give this thing a shot. I think we got it licked. All right, so here's the deal. First of all, I'm old, and in order for me to see the torque spec on my uh, on my torque wrench, I gotta wear these freaking reading glasses. Makes me look studious, you know what I'm saying? So here's the bottom line. Um, so I checked the amp amp draw, and uh, I was at 50 milliamps or or less for the most part. Uh, there was a couple of spikes in there when I did the initial hookup, which I expected. But there was nothing out there drawing current like it shouldn't be. So I just don't know if uh, it was time for the battery to go. And in the process, you know, some of the, some of the connection points were just filthy and, and we were having some bad grounds or bad whatever. But by taking that starter out, cleaning up all the terminals, testing it, putting it back in the truck... I've had, you know, three to four successful starts and um, no failures yet. So everything seems to be operating properly. If for some reason uh, this truck doesn't start again, I did break a, uh, I did break the little red clip on the, the wiring harness that, that snaps into the uh, starter solenoid. And so there was just enough of that clip in there where I was able to, to, to you know, to push that thing up in tight and slide what was left up in there so it would lock and uh, put the heat shield back in place. So hopefully that's going to hold. Um, if not, then um, I'm going to have to fix that. But for now, knock on some freaking wood. I think we got the problem fixed um, with the only expense being a battery and a voltmeter. So if you got a no start problem like I had, power, everything was showing up inside. You turn it and you got to click, go down there, clean off that ground location, pull the power cable to the starter, clean those connections, and um, and then uh, reassemble it and see what you get. All right, so right now my, 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 uh, my voltmeter is reading right around 14 for a charge, so I, I, I think I'm okay. If something changes, I'll report back. Thanks for watching.